The distance from Albany, New York, to the epicenter of this earthquake is 5,600 kilometers. Approximately, how much longer did it take for the S wave to arrive at Albany than the P wave? Well, to do this problem, we need to use our earthquake P wave and S wave travel time chart, which is in your reference table. So I'm going to bring that up now. Now, now here's the good news. You will definitely be tested on this on the Regents exam. This is part of your Earth Science Lab practical. So you absolutely must know how to use this chart. So let's take a look at it. Down at the bottom, see where it says epicenter distance. And that's in thousands of kilometers. Okay, and then you see these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Each one of those is 1,000. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Now between these, there's four little lines which divide it into five little boxes. So if you divide 1,000 kilometers by five, you get 200. So each little box is 200 kilometers. So for example, between five and six would be 5,000 kilometers, 5,200, 400, 600, 800, 6,000 kilometers. Well, we want 5,600 kilometers. I'm pointing to it right now. Now you go up that line to where it intersects with the P wet line and the S line. See that? That's the P line, and up there, that's the S line. You go over to the Y axis, and the Y axis is how long it took for a P wave to travel that distance. So for the P wave to go 5,600 kilometers, it takes nine minutes. For an S wave to travel 5,600 kilometers, it takes 16 minutes and 10 seconds. So the question is, approximately how much longer did it take the S wave? So if you were in Albany and the P wave arrived, how much longer did you wait until the S wave arrived? Okay, so what's 16 minutes and 10 seconds minus 9 minutes? That's 7 minutes and 10 seconds. That's your answer.